Over in the North Sea, Britain's oil exploration companies are warning that the government's new energy profits levy, which taxes them at 75%, poses an existential threat to the UK's oil and gas industry. Who better than GB News' economics and business editor, Liam Halligan, who joins me in the studio now to break all of this down with On The Money. Yes, Liam Halligan, fantastic stuff. So you've been speaking to the boss of uh, Tailwind Energy, I believe, a big North Sea exploration company. What's going on? I have. So Tailwind, actually, they're a sort of small, medium-sized company because what's happening in the North Sea, as it's got harder to extract oil and gas from the North Sea, mm. a lot of the really big energy companies, the Shells and the BPs, they do less than they used to. So about 60 or 70% of what we get from the North Sea now mm is reliant on these small British-based companies where most of what they do is in the North Sea. They're not the global guys. Mm. And they're all brought together in a trade association called Brindex, the Association of British Independent Oil Exploration Companies. Now, bear with me. Back in the spring of this year, before the war in Ukraine really got going, oil and gas companies, they were taxed at 40% on their profits. So that's much higher than regular companies, which are taxed at corporation tax, which is yeah. 19%. Rishi Sunak increased that to 65% in May, and Jeremy Hunt in the autumn statement has increased that again to 75%. Right. And this organisation, Brindex, it's saying, look, this is just going to mean that a lot of these small and medium-sized exploration companies, oil and gas uh, extracting companies in the North Sea, they just won't be able to operate if the government's taking 75% of what they make because a lot, lot of what they make goes paying their debts and so mm. on, because they're small, not massive multilateral companies. And so they wrote a letter to the Chancellor over the weekend, which I've got hold of, and right. I can show some of it to you here up on the screen. Brindex, these small oil and gas companies, they say the recent rise, the latest rise is 75%. That is that existential threat to the industry, and with it, those jobs in our nation's energy security, UK upstream companies, that's the exploration companies can no longer shoulder this extreme open-ended tax burden right. strong words they went and on they went went on to warn if the government continues down this path of the current anticipated 75 percent rate further investment in the uk has become unviable and so begins a rapid onset of the decline of the north sea mm. now this is serious stuff because the reason the government wants more oil and gas from the north sea of course is to enhance our energy security, given what's happening in terms of Russia yeah. and Ukraine. And earlier today, I spoke to uh, Jacques Tomé. He is, as you say, uh, from Tailwind Energy. This is one of these small oil and gas companies. He, in this interview, he's speaking for Brindex, that trade association bringing together the small oil and gas explorers. And this is what he said. OK. Really here today to talk about what is an HMT inflicted complete collapse of the North Sea. Um, there will be capital flight and the timing of this is very poor given how strategic the North Sea is right now in the face of war with Russia and runaway inflations. This, this finance bill will increase energy costs to consumers. It will actually lower revenues over time for the HMT because they are on the hook for 20 billion pounds of decommissioning. And that will accelerate as fields get decommissioned earlier. Tomé, he mentioned their HMT, that's Industry Largo for Her Majesty's Treasury. Mm. What he's saying is that the 75% profit tax will kill off a lot of companies. Those companies will then have all their kit in the ground in the middle of the North Sea. The state is partly responsible for decommissioning that kit right. under the terms of the contracts. So the Treasury is going to lose out twice. It's not going to get money from these companies because they'll be gone, according to to the industry body, and then the Treasury will have to pay for the decommissioning costs. So if Jeremy Hunt is looking to raise money, then he's barking up the yeah. wrong tree, so to speak. And Jacques Tomé Tom also told me, he said, it's not that the small oil and gas operators object particularly to 75% for now. Yeah, These are tough times. These companies mm. say that they need to be seen to be pay their way. But what he's saying is that if you charge 75%, on their entire profits, that's going to wipe them out. So why not charge them 75% above a certain level? Yeah. So above profits that they make when the oil price, for instance, goes above $75 a barrel. Yeah. Here he is again. Capital will leave the country. And it, with that, a lot of jobs, infrastructure, and most importantly, energy security and bills will suffer. So what we're saying is create a very simple amendment with a price floor that will protect capital, 
protect jobs and energy security. And then above that level, you can we, we're happy to pay 75%. And the, the revenue will actually make more money over time because we will continue to reinvest and keep oil production up, which is what they need for their treasury budget. Yeah, Liam, it, to be honest with you, it winds me up a lot of this stuff because fundamentally, I think most people just want a really warm home and they don't want to have to pay through the nose for it. I get that it might seem unpalatable that in these difficult times there are some companies making huge, huge profits, but they didn't invade Ukraine, did they? And I just don't see... I, I, is this just a ridiculous... Like, the left of one. Like, we don't like rich people. There's a load of rich people. Let's clobber them with tax. Well, then they just do one and we don't have anything. These small and medium-sized companies, they're not making particularly large profits at the moment. Patrick, the oil price is not historically very high at, yeah. at the moment. They're companies that only operate in the North Sea that's got some of the highest extraction costs in the world. As this taxation goes up on them, they're going to find it very hard, they say, to repay their debts, which is why some of them may ultimately topple over. Look, this is a live issue. Thanks for sticking with me. I know, I know it's a bit complex, but often the story is in the complexity. This is going to be debated in the House of Commons mm. tomorrow as part of the government's finance bill, the legislation that implements the autumn statement. Mm. And I'd expect a lot of people in the House of Commons to be concerned about the complete demise of the North Sea oil industry. It's a great source of jobs for an awful lot of skilled oh, and semi-skilled people. Good, well-paid jobs that allow families to get money together, deposit on a house. Exactly that. that. 